something like that, you would assume, well, that's a video. It's 2,000 by 1,000 resolution. It's running at 30 frames a second. And we're on a laptop, a, a small, cheap laptop. But um, Derek here has an Xbox in his hands, an Xbox controller. And um, he's able to fly around all of that data without any point decimation at all. And that's only the beginning. We're going to show much bigger data sets than this. So the question is, from a technical perspective, how is this done? How can you run all of that data without point decimation? And we're not even using the graphics card. And the answer is, this is three-dimensional search algorithm technology. If you stop and think of something like Google or Yahoo, they look amazing if you stop and think about what they look like they're doing. If I type into the computer something like to be or not to be, and then I press search, it looks like Google just read every book in human existence and said, found it there, found it there, found it there, and gave me a list. Of course, Google's not doing that. It's got an indexed system, a system where, just like books in the library from A to Z can easily be found, like if I need to find Snow White, S, S, N, S, N, O, LiDAR data in the past has been like going to a library where all the books are on the floor. So if I have a very large model, I just take all the points and, and uh, well, roughly, I just try and put them onto the screen. This is a system that efficiently is trying to grab one point for every pixel on the screen. So if you do that and you have the whole Earth and you're far away, it is efficient. It's only grabbing one point for every pixel on the screen. If you're down to the grains of dirt, it's only grabbing one point for every pixel on the screen. The speed ends up being the same. So we propose that this is a much better way moving forward because it gives unlimited power, and so you can make as much data as you want. Of course, that creates a second problem. Can I just have some water? You can now run unlimited data. How are you going to be able to load it? Here we have some bookmarks on the side, just like most geospatial type programs do. And we're going to press, let's do Vienna, let's do Vienna 1. You can fly with the Xbox control pad. That is 1.6 terabytes of data, and it loaded in 0.8 seconds. Now, once again, any software company that claims that they can make loading faster, I mean, we're normally dealing with, you know, 30 minutes or longer. There is no such thing as 1.6 terabytes of RAM, certainly not in a laptop. Any company that says we've been able to increase loading that many times, that, that doesn't really make sense. So let's explain what we're doing here. Loading is the act of taking data from the hard drive and bringing it into RAM. In this particular case, our search algorithm is running from the hard drive and grabbing only what's needed. So if we go very high up into the sky, we see 1.6 terabytes of data, the whole city of Vienna. If we go down to the ground, then naturally it just grabs exactly what it needs, always running from the hard drive. So all loading is pretty much gone. You never have to worry about loading again. Loading has been abolished, and that's a very big claim. We're all used to loading. When a company says loading is gone, it will not worry you anymore. That changes things a little bit. Can we look at the other bookmarks? So normally bookmarks, you have a model, and you might make some bookmarks and, and jump from bookmark to bookmark. In this case, we have the bookmarks for entirely different models. So that's a totally different model that's on this three terabyte hard drive here on the side. There's another one. So you can easily now jump around your data. We moved on from here. We encountered a lot of companies in the geospatial industry where they would go out and they would scan fire departments, railway departments, and they would bring back those scans and they would then have to put them onto every computer in their organization where somebody needed to use that scan. And um, so if we could run from a, a hard drive, then the next stage was to make it so it would run from a company's central server. So the ability now we have is where you can take all of your organization's data, put it in one place on the central server, and um, I mean, we've worked with some very big companies that had a lot of data, even data at different points in time. Mining sometimes scans every month. So what we do now is we can put all of that data on one central server and everyone in the company is able to all run the data from one central server without having numerous copies in 
numerous different machines. From there, um, unfortunately we don't have the internet plugged in up here, so we're going to have to do this from videos 